Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome back to Art of Awakening. My name is Ona Christie, and I'm here today with a really special guest. This is Wendy Mills from Wendy Mills Nature Photography. And um, we have had all sorts of fun over the last couple of weeks uh, collaborating together as artists um, to just for fun, for one, um, to honor her spirit for another, and um, to uh, also to assist in a, a, the United Pegasus Foundation, which is a thoroughbred horse rescue, and to assist them in the amazing work that they are doing. So welcome, Wendy. Thank it's you. It's a pleasure so having you here. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate so, being here. Yeah. Um, so maybe, maybe let's kind of launch in with just a little background of why we're doing this and, and how it started. And I think... Um, it, for me, it was just starting with my last video with the April energies and all the horse energy that I was feeling. I just as soon as I started tuning into April, just this big, beautiful horse showed up in my mind, you know, kind of running free. And and then the next prompt was to contact you because you've, this work you've been doing with horses and maybe you could share a little bit about that. I have always loved horses. I rode a little bit as a, as a child, and I was recently looking for an organization, um, a local organization that I could possibly help with, and I learned about the United Pegasus Foundation. Um, the founder, Helen Meredith, had been a jockey when she was young, over in France, had ridden over 100 horse races. She came out here, um, was in Southern California, and started learning about what was happening to these horses and others, um, and the, some of the horrible, you know, fates they kind of met at the after. Um, so she started rescuing them in her backyard, grew the organization. She had a hundred over 130 horses there when I met her, and it was just, you know, amazing work They're, they've been doing um, for so so many years, decades. So I um, just offered, you know, how can I help with any kind of fundraising, and had the idea since I love photography wildlife photography, animal photography, about creating maybe a book that tells their story, shares some of the horses' uh, stories, and using it, you know, purely for fundraising for them, and just connected through that. Mm, yeah, and and how, what gave you that idea for a book? I mean, what's, yeah, you know, it's interesting. Know this I, isn't your first book either, right? You yes, yeah, my first book um, was A Flash of Their Soul, Inspiration from the Wildlife of the Tehachapi Mountains, um, with inspirational messages matched with, you know, what the animals can teach us. Yeah. And I just really wanted to share the beauty of the animals, our world. And then I brought it kind of one more layer of also sharing um, the stories and honoring the people and organizations who are protecting and caring for our animals and our wildlife. And that's kind of how I went from one to the other. Um, but I've always loved photography. I started back in my um, back in my 20s when it was film. And I took a class, an evening class, and with film darkroom processing, I was the I was the person there who flipped the plate over and broke the glass and the pitch blackness. You could hear the crashing glass, you know, but I loved it. <laughs> Um, even so, you know, I, I was like, oh, what do I do? It's pitch black. And all you could hear is my glass shatter. <laughs> oh, <was> no. <laughs> <laughs> from then I was hooked. Um, yeah. So, yeah, just loved it ever since. Um, back then I was sharing, I was in New York City. So I was kind of sharing the beauty meant kids playing with chalk on a sidewalk or an elderly couple walking, you know, mm -hmm. take from behind um, those kind of pictures. And it's just kind of evolved into my passion for animals and wildlife, um, yeah. connecting the two. Connecting the two, yeah. And mm -hmm. so it, it, it sounds like it was sort of a process, an evolutionary process, right, of taking those passions yes. and combining them, yeah. Abs yeah. Absolutely, very much so. Um, and I feel like um, everything has, has kind of happened that way and you just kind of start down a path and it unfolds. Um, mm -hmm. So I also took a, an animal behavior class um, when I was out here in California, um, started volunteering, volunteer work led to being on some nonprofit boards, combining, um, I have a finance background, so combining that with my passion for animals, 
and now kind of full circle back to the photography. Right. So right. it just, you know, the path is kind of just unfolded as right. as you keep stepping forward. I think new things just yeah. come yeah. up. So have you, have you, like, I think all of us as creatives, right? Mm -hmm. There's a struggle in there somewhere, right? <laughs> whether it's, um, you know, balancing, you know, other demands, other things that we have going on, whether it's a career or a family or whatever it is with, with the creative voice. And, and even for creatives who are doing that for a living, there's always the balance between what's going to sell, what's going to support me and what, what does my heart want to do. Tell me if you wish to, to share any of the struggles that you've kind of come up against in that, that creative process and, and you know, how, how you may have overcome them. Really good question. Um, I feel like I've taken a lot of breaks on the path. You know, um, there were times where I was just focused on um, vocation as opposed to avocation, <laughs> like the, the job and making that happen. Um, and then coming back mainly often through volunteer work. Mm -hmm. I found I found my way back to my animals and, and wildlife and nature, um, passion and tr some travel. Um, yeah. So a lot of it was even combining what I did for work and then bringing it back into what, what I really cared about. Um, even if it wasn't my paying job that was doing that, it was a volunteer job. And then the actual creating of the photography, um, again, I recently just circled back to it, um, which I'm so glad I did, but it's, you know, finding that stillness has been a challenge when it's a busy life, finding the time, finding the stillness, mm -hmm. um, being in the flow is so important in photography. Yeah. Um, but it's also something I'm not generally in, <laughs> in the rest of my life. So right. it's, right. you know, really um, important yeah. to bring that in. I find. Yeah. 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 So what are some ways that you found to help yourself get into that flow, especially coming from, say, a, a day on the job or something where you have to be more regimented? Yeah, you know, I find... Um, it's really important just to make the time in whatever way you can. If I can get out into nature and just mm -hmm. grab the camera, you know, I'll do that. If I can't, I'll get on the computer at the end of the day and just pull up some pictures and start editing just to keep it kind of going, um, which uses more of the analytical, critical mind. But you also have to kind of be in that moment um, yeah. while you're doing it. Yeah. So it may not be the same thing all the time. Um, when I was working on the two books, it was, especially um, with United Pegasus Foundation, it was, if I could carve out time to get over there and take more photos, um, and Helen was wonderful, made herself so available for me to come over and get what I needed, you know, the, the number of times um, to be able to complete that, um, but it really kind of took over in terms of um, my passion and, you know, everything. It's, it's amazing how time can open up um, that you didn't think you had when you're really in the middle of something, uh, you know, that you're passionate about. When you're able to surrender to it. Yeah. Yes. And uh, do you ever really fear around that surrendering? Um, yes. I, it's really true. Cause I, I always, you know, I hold on to my career job um, very tightly. Um, yeah. And I've, you know, maybe cut back some hours and found ways to be flexible, but um, letting go completely and making a full shift, you know, is, is hard. That's a challenge. Yeah. So um, right now I'm kind of sharing the space between the two, um, but I've really been focused over the last two years on whether it's a monthly newsletter getting some photos, getting out there, um, the two books. I'm, I'm already starting to think what could be the next project. Um, I really, you know, like I said, want to not just share the beauty and, and capture the moments, but also honor the people and organizations who are doing such amazing work out there. Um, so that is more of a commitment, a you know, right. full-time commitment to, to dive into again. And that's one of the things I love around about your work is that you, you there's context to it, right? It's you're looking at the relationships that are there behind just you know the pretty things that we see. 
Um, I, I, I love that you're taking those relationships into account because ultimately, you know, relationships are, are they're not just so important, they're, they're what everything is made of, right? Yeah. Very, very true. Yeah. And there's yeah. so much that both the animals, nature, and people can share right. from their, their stories. So um, there's just endless, um, you know, right. stories out there to tell. Yeah. And speaking of stories, I know you had a couple when, um, I don't know if you have a, do you have a copy of your book? I do right here. Yeah. My, my copy's digital, but um, okay. I love that you included some of the wow. stories of the individual horses at United Pet Pegasus Foundation. I, I wonder if you'd be willing to share one or two of those because I found them really inspiring. Yeah, absolutely. Um, right now there's close to 130 horses residing there at the, at the sanctuary, the haven that they have. Um, they're currently trying to move horses from a few locations into one big location to kind of reduce operating costs and just ease of oversight. Um, and these animals are primarily X-race horses. There are also some Premarin horses um, from that industry, um, the byproduct of that industry. There's others that came from rescues that could no longer care for their animals. So it, it's a lot of different um, stories. <laughs> um, one, of, one of which is called, named Gold's Big Time. And let me see if I can not get a glare. It's the white horse. I feel like I'm going angling the wrong way. Okay, that might be better. Okay. So Go's Big Time was actually a pony horse at the rate at the racetrack. Um, didn't actually race, you know, mm. the pony horses you see taking out other horses. Sure. Um, Go's Big Time arrived at United Pegasus with really um, bad damage to both the front and the back legs. Mm. But Go's Big Time is so sweet, even with the harsh history, so sweet. And I felt just teaches us about forgiveness yeah. and moving on, no matter what the past. Um, so to me, I looked at each horse, heard their stories, met them and felt, gosh, what's, what's the message? Um, right. this other horse, Lake Kachuma, I think that's a better way to hold up a picture of Lake. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> okay. So Lake Kachuma, um, is a bay thoroughbred and, um, had the most severe injuries or probably one of the most severe that they had taken in, um, including bone fracture. In the legs and the veterinarians at the Santa Anita racetrack actually had saved Lake um, at the time of all the injuries, but you'd never know it if you saw Lake today running, you know, with out there um, with the other horses. And to me, Lake just talk, talked of the power of endurance, the power of healing, and moving forward that way um, after such incredible injuries. All right, and, so fractured legs. That's that's. Typically, we think of that as death sentence for a horse, right? Yeah. yeah. Plates and screws. And I forgot how many Helen mentioned, you know, that Lake has, yeah. um, you know, really as if a person, you know, rebuilt, you know, with Lake, uh, with a metal and screws and plates. And if you could see Lake, this is Lake today, you know, just yeah. this beautiful, vibrant, um, horse that was such energy, um, just such a connection. And it, to me, it's all about, you know, healing. Um, there, there's, there's a lot of different stories there, but th those are two of my favorites. So. I love that. And, and I love that you've taken the time to, to learn the stories and because these horses can speak to us. They each have a story, they each have a message and it, but it takes somebody with sensitivity and with a voice, right, to see that. And, and, you know, we're not here to do things alone, right? Um, you've partnered with these animals in a really special way to get their message and their voice out, right? <laughs> um, exactly. Which is, is just beautiful. Um, but I, I think something to kind of think about is uh, sometimes when there's a call for fundraising mm -hmm. or a call for donations or whatever, it's easy to put people or animals or whoever's benefiting into that mode of victim, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so I think what you're calling out here is it, it, it's it's these are horses like they've been through rough times and yes they needed a helping hand 
but ultimately they, they're not victims and, and they have something to give, right? <laughs> something really big to give. And I'd, I'd love your thoughts on that. Absolutely. And many, many, or some, I should say, of the horses I know come in um, can be rehomed mm -hmm. and have a second life, you know, second career even um, with a rider or, or somebody they connect with and um, a beautiful home that way. Some, the injuries are so severe or they're so elderly at that point. Um, they stay at the sanctuary, but these, you know, you can, you can see also just like the, um, there's just so many there when you have 120, 130 horses, um, they're, you know, groups and they're out, you know, running and doing everything horses should be doing. Um, they've healed, you know, to, for the most part, um, their physical injuries, um, they're, they're getting the second life, the retirement life they deserve. Um, but it's, it's very much, um, they give back, you know, there's so much joy there too, watching them and seeing them do what horses do, whether it's kicking in the mud or, you know, rolling and, you know, running around with each other. So. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Um, yeah. So, so here's a question that I know somebody out there is asking in the back of their mind, right? With everything that's going on in the world right now. Everything is going on. There's a lot of human misery and, and so forth. Mm -hmm. Why should we care about these horses in particular? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, I look back, um, horses throughout humanity, throughout history, have helped humanity in so many ways. They've been, you know, transportation, they've worked on our farms, they've been in the military, they've been sports, you know, the sports for us, they've been loving companions. Um, so, you know, in so many ways they've given to humanity through, through time, yeah. it feels like the least we can do is give them back a safe haven after the work they do, um, or after, you know, whatever, wherever they come from. And there's just a mystical bond between humans and horses um, that has gone back, you know, back to the time of, um, you know, there's the unicorn and the centaur and the um, pegasus, you know, <laughs> so um, there's always been this mystical bond and they've always served humanity so well. Um, it feels like the pact should be two ways, more, more so almost. I mean, every living being is so special and, you know, matters so much, right. but horses have just always been there serving mankind so that that's the first thing that always comes to my mind on yeah. um, that special relationship and bond so I love I love your answer to that mm -hmm. one it's um they are such big heart animals like they they're so big hearted oh. and 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 you're right that just that service it's been moved from millennia um, throughout all, almost all of human kind of since civilization started, or even before that they were hunted. And there is another gift of service, right? Um, when, when we go back to the really wild um, mm. origins of, of both of our species. Um, but I don't think it took long for that to become more of a partnership. Um, and continues to be, but it feels now that there's there's that partnership is continuing and it's continuing on another level, on a very spiritual level, um, because horses really do help us to understand ourselves, I think, in a way that would not be possible with any other animal, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Because of that desire for service. Right. Yes. They, they wouldn't have, you know, I think at the very beginning, there's there's a lot of kind of mistreatment of animals now. But I think at the very beginning, any species that has been domesticated came in with a like a, an agreement with humanity and and horses. Really, it seems like they've just agreed to serve in whatever the way they could. They're just so big hearted. Um, and, yes. and and it feels like, well, that's something that is starting to open up in the heart of humanity itself. So it's no wonder <laughs> that horse is showing up right now. Um, it, Absolutely. Yeah. Even you see them now with the therapy animal programs. Um, it's just really booming out there using horses. Um, so the help continues. 
that dedication to humans, I think, continues in, yeah. in all new, wonderful ways. Right. So, and, and so many of them are so aware. Like I remember my, my daughter for a while was in, when she was in pony club. I had my kids in pony club for just a year or two. And, um, she, but we didn't have a horse, right? <laughs> so right. we didn't have to borrow horses, but there was one horse called cutie, a, a quarter horse that, um, and she was this little, she looked like a bump on a log on this horse. Right? <laughs> she was maybe seven or eight, <laughs> but, and, and, she tells me about this time where QD could feel she was about to fall off. And this mare would just sort of like, she said she stopped really gently and made sure I was, oh. you know, back on the horse. And she always remembers that horse for her, her loving kindness, right? right. The compassion of this animal, this animal that, you know, they're so big when you get up close to them, it's like, holy, wow. Right. It's, right yeah the power that's there and and for this animal to be aware of the vulnerability of a child and to be taking care of her that's the kind of heart that that they have often so. absolutely I, I remember when I'm riding as a child if we were out on the trail I would be that kid whispering to the horse as we as we went <laughs> you know, oh you're so good you're so amazing um just little whispers and yeah. you know just yeah. You know, <laughs> the connection is just so there. Um, the connection, yeah. You can make it, yeah. Yeah, okay. So I would love to hear about briefly, like your creative process working with the horses and then we'll kind of segue to mine mm -hmm. creating this piece yeah. of art because now they're connected, right? right. So where did it start? Then you you contacted um, United Pegasus Foundation, the Horse Rescue right. And yeah, yeah. I spoke to um, Helen Meredith, who's the founder, and she, you know, first I went over. Um, I was I we sponsored one of the horses, um, just a monthly mail. So I went over to you know, you know see the place, meet it, uh, the horse. My daughter picked the name, picked the horse based on the name. Believes it's a cat. Love that because she loves cats. Love <laughs> so. <laughs> Um, just beautiful. And the whole place, it, it was just amazing to me, you know, seeing so many rescued animals, horses in one place together, um, living as they should be in, in that next part of their lives, in the healing portion, um, whether again, injuries or elderly or coming from a, another rescue that couldn't do for them what needed to be done, that kind of yeah. thing. Um, so yeah, just went over, started trying to help with a little fundraising grant research, whatever it was, and then had the idea, kind of the inspiration came about doing this book and um, talked to, you know, Helen about it. And she was completely on board. Um, and we just moved forward. And I would just go over. And to me, a lot of it was, um, while taking the photos, just capturing the moment, but getting into the flow, getting into the stillness. Um, of that moment it's so present moment when you're doing photography yeah. um and then you know bringing it into the editing and putting the book together is a little bit more analytical critical mind kind of jumping yeah. in um yeah. but yeah it just became a you know a heart project as I, I like to think about it and yeah I, you know complete donation volunteer my time um and the cost of the you know I printed up all the books um as a donation for them to then sell and use as fundraising tools um, sure. and to have the story told, you know, yeah. of some of these amazing beings and her story um, and what she accomplished and created. I thought it was so important to be out there um, for people. Yeah. 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 So one thing I was wondering was because you had such beautiful, well, both beautiful still pictures and just beautiful action pictures as well. Were those just, did you just kind of wait until the horses did their thing or were they like, were there specific specific times that you went out where they were more likely to be active or? You know, um, when there's so many, you're, yeah. you know, you're just bound to have, you have the group standing around, you know, kind of yeah. relaxing in the sun um, or eating, you know, and then there are the ones that are doing some running around um, mm -hmm. Helen would go out there with me and that helps yeah. because she, she knew, you know, what's a good time, what, you know, even what's a good angle, like where to be, you know, you may want to stand over there. You may want to be, um, as well as, you know, when they're racing around where I shouldn't be <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure, <laughs> because yeah, 
you know, they are very big animals and they, you know, are huge and strong and you don't want to be in the wrong place either when they're racing and, you know, all of that. Yeah. Um, yeah. You see a type of quick, let's see, shot of one of those, um, I think, yeah, even these two kind of show them a little more in action, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, and, and you know, sometimes uh, the group just racing around, yeah. um, doing what horses should be doing. Um, so, and they're thor mostly thoroughbreds. Um, they're just gorgeous to watch. And even the ones that aren't are just stunning. I'm going to show you one picture of a um, byproduct of the premarin industry which is um, pregnant mares urine used as hormonal um, mm -hmm. supplement. But um, unfortunately it's, you know, not a great industry for horses. And this on the one with the blonde fluff Frost. Um, is Jack Frost, who um, is just the most dazzling horse to see. So they're not, you know, there's, there's a lot of variety um, right. in the, in the horses and, what they look like too they're not all thoroughbreds um but just spectacular to see them so right. very inspirational <laughs> and and they they were really inspiring to work with because when when i got that download to contact you and do a collaboration um it was you know and you were kind enough to send me those photos that and she, you sent me the whole book right on on digital and uh, I was just like going through, it was like one gorgeous picture after another. Oh. Um, but I picked out some that felt like it, it just seemed like it, I wanted to bring forward that sense of action and of carrying forward. Because one of the things that horse does as uh, well as a flesh and blood animal, but also as a spirit animal is help move over obstacles, right? To carry you over, to carry you through. And um so I wanted that sense of action <laughs> and um, there were so many of them, right, to choose from, but um, the ones that I chose were some of the ones that were just sort of more like kind of just sort of break, it just felt like breaking free, breaking out of the box and, and moving forward. And um, so this is actually a compilation of four different um, photos of yours. These two, I worked from the photo and this one was kind of like, I melded the legs from one with it <laughs> from another just so it would fit with the yeah. composition um but I, I i love the personality of each horse and it was really a beautiful to kind of be able to in spirit <laughs> connect with these animals and um ultimately the message that really came through loud and strong was um one of just sort of overcoming the, the ups and the downs, right? Mm -hmm. that, that I think the whole world is going through right now. And, and the horses are telling me, it's just, this is just shaking off the old stuff, right? Each of these thoroughbreds has that story of coming from this place of being used or being in, you know, not in its natural environment. And some of them coming through very, you know, difficult injuries or difficult experiences. And um, so there was this sense of, you know, just buck it off, <laughs> you know, shake it up, shake it down, you know, let's just shake all that stuff off. And then finally moving into this very kind of almost grounded sense of moving forward, the ears perked, just, you know, settled, but yet not, you know, still moving forward. Um, and, and I think working with horse energy, because for me, this was really honoring my spirit animal, <laughs> because this is a primary spirit of an animal of mine, is, is working with horse energy, you have to learn the balance and the grounding is so huge, right? Because otherwise you are, you know, rocketed up and down. It, it's an energy that's like very powerful and it can just kind of <laughs> it can it, it, you know it can it can kick you all over the place <laughs> um so so one thing that horse teaches working with horses or with horse energy or anytime that you're bringing horse energy in or experiencing it is um the grounding and the breath work and the centering um you know i know when they train horses and work with them even like starting a horse they do a lot of groundwork before they even get on it 
So, so learning to be centered and balanced um, is is huge, and I think that's what these horses were trying to, you know, kind of get that across. That when it's it's powerful energy, it can be difficult energy to work with, but it is so worth it, right? Um, and I think we're all as a collective moving through this time right now, where there are these energies that are going crazy, and it feels like being on a bucking bronco sometimes these days, but they're giving us this hope and this promise, right? That, uh, you know, we move through this and it's gonna be easy, smooth sailing at some point. Absolutely, that that's beautiful. And the, and the painting is um, mesmerizing, it's so beautiful. You captured it um, all so well in, in yeah. one painting. It's amazing to me. Um, yeah, because when I look at horses, I, I just feel like, absolute strength and absolute artistry combined Versus, together yes. it's it's you know that freedom and connection the, the um with the strength and again the artistry and yeah. in one package it's you the know beauty too let's not forget yeah. that and that's such a huge thing i think right now that nobody's talking about at this time not a lot of people but beauty yes it, it's yeah. something that used to be if you look at any ordinary objects right now we've got very utilitarian ones um, but you know it used to be that everything was made with an eye to beauty as well as function and i mean yes. it really epitomizes that doesn't he i mean it's absolutely um and it's so easy to focus on you know negative things out there as opposed to that beauty um and sharing that beauty and and you know appreciating it but um, just the strength and again, the artistry, um, the connection, you know, that mystical connection with horses. Um, yeah, you captured that so well. So <laughs> it is, as did you. <laughs> so it's so been really a, a pleasure to do this project. And I guess let's talk about, okay, let's talk about the fundraising aspect of that, right? Um, yeah. Because well, it feels like there are, there are so many causes that one can give to. And I think, you know, there's going to be a tug at the heart of somebody who, you know, connects with these animals. Um, you know, just as you've spent all the time that you have, right, and all your time and energy and putting together this book in honor of these horses and those who are, you know, working with them. Um, I've put some time and energy <laughs> into it too, but it's really not so much about that. I think it's about honoring the spirit right now yes. as, um, you know, these, these magnificent creatures who've been serving us for mm. like millennia and, mm. and our partners with humanity, partners in the evolution of humanity, especially, and now moving into this next stage of evolution, they're coming forward as partners again. And so when we're talking about fundraising, it's really more than just about, you know, these particular horses or this particular horse rescue. I think it's about honoring the spirits that's in the air right now in the spirit of this animal that's assisting in human ascension. And um, so I would love for you to talk about your book and your prints and how that's assisting. Absolutely. Back to these animals. <laughs> oh yeah. As I, as I mentioned, I donated my time um, and printed up stacks of these books, which are actually for sale on uh, United, I hate that glare, sorry, <laughs> the United Pegasus Foundation's um, website. You can buy directly from them. There was no cost to them. So every book purchase will buy a bale or two of hay, unfortunately with inflation, um, supply chain shortages, all of that. It's a struggle. Um, the grants that they get from the uh, racing industry and others just don't cover nearly what they need to of the costs of caring for so many of these beautiful animals. Um, so they rely heavily on individual donations and every, you know, every purchase of a book, like I said, buys, you know, a bale or two of hay, um, which is, you know, huge, hugely helpful. Um, I also on my website um, sell prints of a few of the animals. The stories are up there too. Um, again, 100% of the proceeds, the net proceeds of those go to United Pegasus Foundation. Um, and I thank you for your generous 
fundraiser this month to help yeah. as so well. This, so this is the original and you know of course there's only one of these and so usually one person will really feel called like you know that one's meant for me. Um, I have all my original pieces, uh, not just this one, um, on sale this 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 month of April, and then the sale of I'm donating thirty percent of the sale of this one to the United Pegasus Foundation. Plus, one hundred percent of all the print proceeds this month are going um, to UPF. So that is just an easy way, I think, to you know, if the painting calls to you. Um, right now to just really give that, uh, give back to, to Horse Spirit as well. Um, as well as everything on my website right now um, and my Spirit Animal Cards, 10% of that is going to be donated. That's sold this month and 20% of any one-to-one -one sessions that uh, people want to book. That's fantastic. Yeah. And of course, if someone um, wants to learn more about the organization, um, United Pegasus Foundation, you know, actually it's unitedpegasus.org. Um, they can get more information there. Sponsor. Right, and they've got a wonderful Horse. gift shop too, or you yeah. can just do straight up donations. And um, it is, yeah. as far as I understand, one of the oldest and largest horse rescues in the country. And they also act as a mentor to many other organizations. So it's not just supporting this one, it's supporting mm -hmm. a lot of philanthropy going on through yes. the, the mentorship of, of Helen to other other organizations. That's that's very true. Yeah, and there were a few, uh, one in particular that um, had to downsize greatly and mm. UPF took in the horses from there that grew you know, them tremendously quickly, um, yeah. but they stepped in you know, when the need was there. So uh, right. it's just another right. aspect of the organization I love so much yeah. they're yeah they're yeah. for the others absolutely yeah. all right so um i guess before we close i had one more question i wanted to ask and that would be because i know all this has been from your heart and i know it hasn't always been easy what would be your advice to anyone who feels called to do something outside their existing career something that that you know if they have a calling and just has been hard to follow that calling, what would be your advice? Yeah, I would advise just to follow your passion, um, whether it's through a class in the evening or volunteer um, at a local nonprofit or some other way to get involved. And you never know how that path is going to unfold. You know, a couple of classes I took led to volunteer work. Um, at one point, I was spending time in Africa, volunteering for an organization. You kind of end up in places and learning things um, you don't even, you can't even foresee. So um, find ways to just jump in, even, you know, once a month volunteering or once a week volunteering, mm -hmm. you know, whatever really speaks to your heart. I think it opens up so many new worlds um, that otherwise you would miss. And, and yeah. miss the opportunity to learn from too. So right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, and um, yeah, thank you so much, Wendy. And it's really been a pleasure <laughs> to yes. speak with you today. Um, again, any of these works, I'm going to put the links to access them in the description box. So feel free to go. And even if you're just going to browse and enjoy the art, the photography, um, it's so worth it. Uh, go check out Wendy's site. It's a flashofthersoul.com. And um, even if you just have a couple, you know, 10, five, 10 minutes to enjoy some beauty of nature <laughs> horses but also many other animals as well so go check out flashtheirsoul.com and remember you were born to be free <laughs>